it was all a setup. My broker was a thief. The custom officer is a thief because they planned to take the money and split it with each. This person was recommended by someone that I trusted and I believed in, so I didn't do my full homework and research, which is the biggest mistake you can How customs in Jamaica and my broker try to rob me. Um, <laughs> it's weird, but I'm gonna explain to you guys. So I hired this man because someone recommended him and because someone recommended him, highly recommended him, I just put my belief and trust in him. I was younger, so I was a little bit gullible and naive to it. So let hear me out. So I hired this man, assuming that he knew what's gonna do. I'm shipping this um, van to Jamaica. So I needed a broker and I called them and they said X, Y, Z, he's a good guy, blah, 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 blah. But I didn't do my full research, which I didn't know how to go about it because it was my first time. Long story short, as I went ahead and um, spoke to this man on the phone, everything seems legit, right? He told me what to do. So forward a little bit, I took the vehicle to the um, shipping company, did the process, whatever he told me to do, I did it. By me doing that, all was well. So time for me to pick the vehicle up in Jamaica. I went ahead and um, don't pay my hair, no mind. I went ahead and um. got it done all right let me stop right here so anyways by me being who I am I went ahead and um asked a few things that I needed to ask from him he told me whatever so now I'm in Jamaica ready to collect the vehicle he told me the percentage matter of fact he told me the percentage before I went and I wrote everything that I just didn't remember but I had them written down so the percentages to me you know i already my calculation i know what i needed to take from the bank to get it done i knew what i need to have all my paperwork and all the shipping papers that he told me i had to have with me whatever i did so i brought them with me met this guy um he was a nice looking young man but the fact that i had someone so that was not in my thinking so this whole time this man is like trying to flirt carry on whatever but it's a story that was told to me a long time ago to my father from my father told me do not chase a man. Do not sleep with any man that do, you're doing business with. If they're fixing your vehicle, let them fix your vehicle and you pay them and you move on. The same way with anything in life. If you were, And I'm teaching my daughter the same way. Do not get involved with someone just because you think you're going to get over or get a little bit less. It's also like, it's degrading yourself. You know what I mean? So anyways, that was never in my thought because I had someone. But the fact that he was pushing, I didn't pay him any mind. So anyway, long story short. That was part of it. I realized that now he realized he can't get me. Maybe he start redoing the numbers, whatever, whatever, trying to raise it up. Or maybe he thinking I had it. I don't know. Anyway, he met me at my apartment, pick up the paperwork one day. And while I was there, we was going over the numbers. The numbers starting to look shaky. While the numbers starting to look shaky, I'm starting to question it. So when I got out of the car dealing with him, because I didn't let him come upstairs. When I got out of the car, I, um, I start calling around because now I'm in, in, in Jamaica where I could access things. I start asking questions. The numbers didn't seem right. People start telling me different numbers and everyone seemed a little bit funny anyway. But at the same time, I knew something was wrong. Anyways, he told me to write to get the check written up, blah, blah, blah. We was about to go clear the vehicle now. By me going there, I hand the um i didn't hand it to her yet i asked the young lady because he picked a particular person for me to go to which was kind of funny he kept on waiting for this one young lady but it didn't matter to me i wasn't thinking but i was paying attention so i got there and i said to her how much is it that i have to pay and she said 700 and something thousand seven hundred and ninety something thousand dollars i forgot exact words but i know it was 790 something so i said to her what mind you my check has almost $2 million on there. This is the, the amount he told me to get written from the bank. But my dumb behind did not do the calculation again, but he put so many things jacked together, like fees, this, that, whatever. And I'm like, it doesn't add up. It couldn't be that a certain percentage and then all these fees, when I'm, I've been paying fees, I pay for the shipment, I pay for the fees, I pay for everything. So it wasn't adding up. But being that I'm a first time shipper, I did not know what was going on. I did not know how to address things. I did not know how to handle myself. And I didn't ask the correct people. I was asking the right things, but to the, from the wrong people. I could have just went into the office right there in custom area and asked some of the stuff. I didn't know that. 
and get paperwork and how it's done. Even though I'm not a broker, I could have asked the right questions from the right people. Anyways, when she told me I did not hand her my paper, being who I am, I did not hand her my check. I hold back my check. I hold back the paperwork that I'm supposed to hand her and I hold back the check. Cause she, 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 when I told her my name, she knew who I was, which was kind of weird. She knew who I was. She knew exactly how much. I guess from she saw him, she knew who he was. It was just like everything just didn't connect and it didn't feel right. And because it didn't feel right, I did not hand her my check. That's the whole thing I'm trying to say. I did not have my check. So anyways, I called him outside. I said, I need to talk to you for this. I told her, I was, give me a minute. I needed a minute. I took him outside of me and so I started talking. So I said, um, so asking him like, why is it that she's giving me a different number from what you told me to get? He said, um, all kind of things. So he... At the end of the day, he said, let's go back to his office. I said, okay, but I'm a very skeptical now. So I call someone, tell him that I'm going back to the office with this person, blah, blah. And, and I kind of like update him to what's going on. And at that time, I kind of like left it alone. So the person knew where I was that I needed to know that was there with me. Because at this time now, I'm in Jamaica by myself doing business. And I needed someone to know what was going on. So anyways... That said, I went back to the office. There was two young ladies there. He was not by himself, so I felt a little bit more comfortable. I didn't trust him either, but I felt a little bit more comfortable knowing that there was someone else at the office. So while I was talking to him, I started asking questions and, you know, and I'm like, this doesn't seem right. The old moral of the story is I did not have to pay $2 million for my vehicle to be cleared. It was all a setup between him, the customs officer, my broker was a thief. The customer officer is a thief because they plan to take the money and split it with each other. But in the office, I should have known something was up because it's not like the office was shared. Like they all put together and got the space and they just had their own desk. And that's how they work together. It wasn't a particular branch like, okay, it's such and such, you know, business and they work for him, this person. It was each of them had their own like a booth, almost like a barbershop. You each get a booth. It's the same way. That's how they was operating from that customs office. So no one was really working for no one but themselves, which is weird, but that's the way it was. And I figured that out after. Over the years, I've shipped more stuff, so I kind of like a little bit more knowledgeable. But what I'm saying is anyone that's shipping to Jamaica, be careful with the customs officer, your broker, anyone that you're using, do your homework. This person was recommended by someone that I trusted and I believed in, so I didn't do my full homework and research which is the biggest mistake you can make because oh he was recommended by this person i'm not even sure if that person even called him and tell him because after that me and that person never really like stay friends or anything because of that situation because i had a feeling like everyone was in cahoots with each other so to me it seemed like my friend my broker and the custom officer was all out to get me and rob me because i was dumb enough to believe but i did get my my truck I'm going to tell you something, what happened though. They took everything out of my van. They completely took all, they even took the rugs out of my van. I shipped stuff, I had put stuff in the van to clear with it, which was on the sale thing. Gone. Everything was gone out of the van. So I have a feeling they all put together or the people that work there could be, I don't know. But all the stuff, so if you're shipping even your vehicle, be careful what you put into your vehicle, what you leave into your vehicle. But my thing is this, I would just buy a car in Jamaica. I'm not paying for a shipping again because it's like buy your car twice or three times if you're not careful so like i said that was my experience with the custom brokers and i'm telling you it was not nice it was uncomfortable unpleasant and it was frustrating at times i can't even get into full detail because it was so long so many things that happened over that time while i'm trying to get my vehicle out but i did and i'm grateful to god because it's only god was holding me together for not letting somebody knock them over side their head i'm gonna be honest with you because i really felt that angry that I was willing to make someone knock them over the head because they was getting over, getting over me. You know, they was really getting the best to me at one point. But I did, they did not get my, all my money. No, they did not. I went back to the bank and I got the bank to rewrite that cashier's check. So that's it for me, you guys. Have a blessed one. That's about it for me and my custom thieves more like it. If you came this far, that means you like the video, please consider subscribing, like and share, and turn the notification bell on. Thank you for watching.